Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to remind you to check out our other Western podcasts released daily by going to otrwesterns.com or searching OTR Westerns in your podcast app of choice. I also wanted to invite you to check out our other podcast channel releasing non-Western shows by going to otnetcast.com or by searching otnetcast in your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun Will Travel. Original air date is November 13th, 1960, and the title is The Map. Let's get into it. I memorized the map and destroyed it. If you kill me, you'll never find the money. Gun Will Travel, starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin, San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Uh, Mr. Paladin, Mr. Paladin. Open door. All right, all right. Yes, yes, yes. What, what's all the excitement, Abel? Oh, Mr. Paladin, you in trouble with the army? In trouble with the army? Why, no. Oh, that's a good. Why do you ask? Well, hey, boy, here, army colonel asked for you downstairs. And hey, boy, thought maybe uh, you in trouble. I'll give you a chance to get away. Oh, too late. Huh? That's Potter, Colonel Potter. <laughs> Paladin. Well, Potter, oh, what are you doing good here? Good to see you. Last I heard of you, you were on the trail of those payroll bandits. What are you doing now? Well, I'm still on their trail. That's oh. why I've come to you. Three years and you still haven't caught them, huh? Well, come on in. Come on in. Thanks. I'll talk to you later, hey, boy. Oh, you so. Well, sit down, John. Uh, Have a cigar? Oh, thank you. Uh, here. Well, you, uh... You seem to have done all right, Paladin. Oh, I... I try. I just hope you're not so well off you can't use $500. Uh, I can always use $500, John. You want me to join the search, huh? We're getting close to him, Paladin. With your help, I think we can get him. How close are you? How much do you remember of the case? Well, let me think. It was a payroll for Fort Anderson... Two men made off of the money, and they took, uh, how much was it, $80,000? 90000 90. And uh, there were three men in on it. Three? That's right. We discovered there was an army man involved. He did all the inside work. It didn't take us long to find him, a private by the name of Jim Griffin. We've been holding him in the prison at the Presidio. Money's not doing him much good, is it? No, no, but he never got his hands on it anyway. What makes you think so? This. Hmm? What's that? We found it in his personal effects. It's a piece of a map. It indicates the position of the payroll money. And you think they buried it? Yes, yes. Jim Griffin's been in the hospital at the prison for the last six months. Part of that time, he's been delirious. We've heard him mumbling about the map, and from what we can gather, he and the other two men made a pact to have somebody bury the money and draw up a map, and apparently they divided the map into three pieces. Who buried the money? Well, we don't know, but whoever it was, they killed him. We learned that much from Griffin. He's also been talking about meeting the others on December 12th, or it'll be too late. I see. Now, where do I fit in with your plans? Well, Jim Griffin died this morning. Oh? We want you to be Jim Griffin. What are you talking about, John? Here. Take a look at this tintype... Let's see. It's a picture of Griffin taken several years ago. This? Mm-hmm. This is Griffin? <laughs> you look enough like him to be his twin, Paladin. <laughs> I see. Will you do it? Mm, well, I don't know, John. The, this map gives no location. Uh, I wouldn't know where to start. Oh, we can help you there. Griffin has a girlfriend who's come to visit him three or four times. She probably knows where the meeting place is. And if she doesn't, 
Maybe the other two men will come looking for you. Like I said, there's a $500 reward, providing, of course, that you get the proof on the other man and get the money back. How do you want the money stacked, John? <laughs> then you'll do it. I'll do it. Colonel Potter, shake hands with Jim Griffin. There's no doubt about it. Show business is the business of entertainment, and performers are very far from being dull folk. And this is a matter you'll have a lot of fun verifying when the Mitch Miller Show brings sparkling show business chatter and personalities your way over these CBS radio stations. Give Mitch Miller and his show business guests a listen, and you'll prove it to yourself. You can be sure a very good time will be had by all, yourself included when you get better acquainted with your favorite limelight personalities on The Mitch Miller Show. Three days later, I had become Jim Griffin. Colonel Potter gave me as much information as they had of the man's background, and I was dishonorably discharged from the Army. I even said goodbye to Griffin's old cellmates, and to a man they accepted me. But the real test was to come with Anna Baker, Griffin's girlfriend. The colonel's men had found out that she lived with her mother 15 miles from San Francisco. If I could get by the girl, I could get by anybody as Jim Griffin. Early one morning, I rode out there, and as I came into the yard, an old woman greeted me, followed by a flock of chickens she'd been feeding. Hello there. Yes? Yes. Uh, Miss Baker, don't you know me? I know you. Uh, I've, uh, I've come to see Anna. She's not here. If it was up to me, she'd never be here to you, Griffin. Go on, I got work to do. Uh, when will she be back? I don't know. I took a horse to be shod. Do you mind if I wait? Jim Griffin, you ain't welcome here. You've brought nothing but sorrow to us. Now, why don't you just ride out of Anna's life? I am leaving, Mrs. Baker. I just I wanted to say goodbye to Anna. Here she comes. Have your goodbye and be done with her. Jim! Hello, Anna. Jim, they told me you were sick. They wouldn't let me see you. They said you didn't know when... Uh, when I, I could see you. What's the matter? Why are you looking at me that way? You've, uh, you've changed, Jim. Yeah, well, prison does things to a man. Ask me, it ain't done enough to you. Mother, please. You should have killed him. Jim, are you, you out of the army now? Yeah, I'm out all right. For good, Anna. Wiley Carson was by day before yesterday. Wiley? Yes, he said I was to see you. They wouldn't let me in at the prison. Said I was to get something from you. Oh, what? You know, the piece of map. Have you got it? Yeah, I've got it. Well, Wiley said maybe you'd give it to me. Uh, now that you're out, you, you can meet him yourself. Did he say where? The Blue Nose Saloon in Johnson City. But you have to hurry. Yeah. Will you... Will you come back this way, Jim? You know I will, Anna. It's a promise? It's a promise. Good luck. Bye. Johnson City consisted of a main street, some 20-odd houses, and a blue-nosed saloon. There, I waited for Wiley Carson. I didn't know what he looked like, but I sat at a table where I could see anyone who entered, and they could see me. I waited a whole day, and then most of another... How about another drink, mister? Uh, well, yeah, fine, all right. Right away. I say, now, it ain't none of my business, but uh, are you waiting for somebody? You're right. 
It isn't any of your business. Uh, no offense, mister. Just that I, I don't remember seeing you before. I've been sitting here for two days now. You, uh, just passing through? Maybe, maybe not. And, uh, no offense now, you understand. I just thought I'd ask. Hey, bartender, how about a drink? Hey, coming uh, right away, mister. I think I'll get this. Well, looky here. Tonight there's a light of the army, Jim Griffin. Hello, Wiley. Bartender, you can bring my drink over here. Yes, sir. <laughs> This is a surprise. Didn't think they'd ever let you out. I was expecting Anna. I decided to come myself. You look different, Jim. That prison done things to you. You try it sometime. You hear courtesy of the warden? Yeah. Discharge, huh? Dishonorable. Sounds like maybe they'd know we was to have a meeting. What are you trying to say, Wiley? I'm saying maybe you're working for the Army now. Maybe a couple of years in prison and they got you there. Radio? <laughs> you listen to me, Carson. I spent two years in a rotten, stinking hole, just dreaming of the time when we can get that money. <laughs> I, I was wrong, Jim. That prison made you meaner than ever. Yeah, well. You just remember that, Wiley. I remember, Jim. <laughs> You two friends ready for your drinks now? Just set them down. Yes, sir. You, uh, you bring your piece of the map? I've got it. Let's see it. I said I've got it. All right, all right. Don't get hard about it. Now, you've been outside. What are the plans now? Same as they were three years ago. All right. We meet Jake tomorrow at the cabin at Hard Rock. Just like we agreed, Jim. We better get started. Drink up. Yeah. Ooh, wee. This stuff's so bad, we better take a couple of bottles with us. Yeah, well, suit yourself. Yeah, you ain't the old Jim I remember. In the old days, you'd have wanted to bring a bottle yourself. Hey, listen to me, Wiley. There's only one thing I want. I've been waiting three years for that money. Jim, we all been waiting. Serving time in a stinking two-by-four cell... I'll get me a bottle. We'll go right now, Jim. Hard Rock was 60 miles from Johnson City. The most direct route ran through a series of grassy plateaus that finally tapered out into high desert country. I knew that land like the back of my hand, and so I knew the easiest way to get there. Wiley and I didn't talk much. I preferred not to. Towards sundown that day, he began to try to steer me away from the best route, but I stuck to my guns. I was soon to find out the reason for his actions. You're getting off the trail, Jim. No, I'm not. This is the best way, and you know it. I think we'd ought to be heading more into them hills. No, this is the way. Sure you don't want a drink, Jim? Nope. And I'll have one. Ball boy. Yeah, this stuff's beginning to taste better the farther we get from town. Yeah. Well, let's go. We're wasting time. But... Hey, wait a minute. Look over there. Where? I don't see nothing. No, over that way. You know, horse, all saddled. He's just standing there. Oh, yeah. I see it. Come on. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Hey, hey Wiley, there's somebody on the ground. So there is. Yeah. Yeah, the, the heat must have gotten them. Yeah, the heat. Yeah, yeah this man's been shot. Wiley, give me a hand. Stand where you are, mister. What are you doing? Put that gun away. Who are you? What's the matter with you, Wiley? Throw down your gun. Why? Because that ain't no man lying there. That's Jake, the one we're supposed to meet. You didn't recognize him. Now that gun, throw it down easy like. Yeah. We're going to have ourselves a little talk. Then I'm going to get you a piece of the map and kill you. Just like I'd done to Jake. Look, Bob. 
Bob, here's why you can't balance these books. Put this little item over here and you come out okay. You're right. Then what's wrong with you? I've had a nagging backache lately with sleepless nights. Makes me feel worn out. Then why not do something about it? But what? I tried Doan's pills. Good advice. That's Doan's pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. All right, that's far enough. Sit down right here. I'm going to find out who you really are. You sure had me fooled, mister. You're enough like Jim to be his twin. So you killed Jake to get his piece of the map, is that it? I'll ask the questions. You're tough, aren't you, Wyatt? Talk, mister. Who are you? That's my business. I'll make you talk. (laughs) I'll hand over that map. I haven't got it. I guess you think I'm fooling. I told you I haven't got it. It'd be awful easy for me to kill you, mister, and then take it. I wouldn't do you any good. I memorized it, threw it away. You kill me and you won't get anything. Let's go. Hold it. You won't kill me, Wiley. No, I... No. No, I didn't think so. We... We gotta get that money. All right, then you show me the pieces of map you have, and I can take us to it. I guess I'm going to have to trust you, mister. (laughs) I guess you are at that, Wiley. Hmm. It should be here, Wiley. Unless... Unless what? Yeah. Well, unless somebody got to it before we did. And keep digging. Hey. Yeah, there's something here. You sure? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. That's the box I was in. All right, give me a hand. Dig it out. That, that's it. No, I... Yeah, it's too heavy for me. Will you give me a hand? All right. But I'll be holding this gun on you. Don't try nothing. Why? Yeah. I'll kill you. Well, maybe not. You give me that gun. You Wiley. Wiley. Well, you asked for it. Turn around, mister. Huh? huh? Anna. Drop the gun. Anna, why are you doing this? I've come for Billy's money. Billy? My brother, Billy. Open that box. You're making a mistake. Open it! All right. You didn't really think you could fool a man's woman, did you? No, I guess not. (laughs) Now the money's here. All right. Hand me five thousand dollars. Why five thousand? That's what they promised Billy. They got him to bury the money, draw the map. Then they put a bullet through his head. He was only sixteen. I didn't know. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Here's your five thousand dollars. <laughs> Now, where's Jim Griffin? He's dead. Dead? He died in prison. Jim? No. No. You loved him, didn't you? 
we were. We were going to be married. He was going to work hard. Make something of himself in the army. And he... He heard about this payroll. Something happened to him. He had to have that money. Jim planned the whole thing, and it... Changed him. I... I guess... I guess it changed all of us. Uh -huh. Do you really want this money? No. Not now. I'll take the rifle, Anna. Miss Wong. Mr. Parladon? How are you this morning? Very fine, Mr. Parladon. Did Army officer find you last night? Colonel Potter? Yes, he did. He took me out to dinner, bought me lots of brandy. He gave me $500. That's nice. Well, Miss Wong, what's the matter with you? Something Hey Boy said. Oh, well, for goodness sakes, what did he say? Hey Boy asked me... Why is wedding ring like eternity? Eternity? Eternity. Mrs. Wong says she not know. Then what did he say? Hey, boy, say, because it has no beginning and no end. Hey, boy, make a fun of getting married. <laughs> no. No, he's not, Miss Wong. He's too. He say that and laugh. Why, no, that's only a riddle. Riddle? Mm hmm. What's a riddle, Mr. Parlina? Well, um. Hey, sir? Um. A riddle is. Well, that's when you ask a question and, uh, and, 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 uh, give a silly answer. No, no. Hey, boy, wasn't making fun of marriage. You sure? Well, sure. Oh, good. Oh, I go now. Thank you, Mr. Parlina. <laughs> Miss Wong, you shouldn't take Hey, boy, so seriously. You just remember that. Uh, yes, I, I try to remember. Have gun. Will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Hoff, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, Tim Graham, and Ken Lynch. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.